All right, so it is the tail end of the ball python breeding season, and I have one female left. I was peeking in her tub, and sure enough, she is sitting on a big pile of eggs. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in there, pull that female off those eggs, set those eggs up in an egg box, and put them in an incubator. And this is the male right here uh, that I crossed with the female Lemon Blast, so it should be an interesting cross. This is probably one of my most impressive snakes. Take a look at this this is a pastel desert ghost male and he's got some really incredible color but the desert ghost is recessive so when I actually breathe these two together we won't see any snakes like this coming out but they'll all be het for desert ghost and I'm really hoping for the super pastel pinstripe 100% head desert ghost. That is the snake I'll use for future breeding. So let's take a look at this female and get her off of these eggs. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take her from the tub over there and put her down in this empty boa tub. I just have a little bit of clean coconut husk bedding in here, but this should be fine just for a temporary enclosure for this girl. So let's take a look at what she has in here. I looked in there earlier and it looks like she might be done laying eggs looks like it is a pretty good clutch of eggs and this is the one that i thought was kind of had the the bigger kind of uh i thought it was like a giant gene but come to find out it's from a certain part of west africa where the snakes the ball pythons just grow a little bit bigger so all these babies should have a slightly bigger body size as far as, you know, comparing, you know, these to a regular, your typical ball python. So what I'm going to try to do is get her off of these eggs. She looks like, looks like she's going to take a bite here. <laughs> and what I, what I like to do is kind of go around from the back. I don't know if she'll kind of freak out here. <laughs> Usually these snakes do not like being messed with when they are on a pile of eggs. And usually, sometimes if you just kind of mess with them a little bit, sometimes they'll just kind of get up and go. And sometimes you kind of, kind of have to help them a little bit. And she actually started laying eggs. It's been quite a while. Uh, I saw a couple eggs in there like uh, maybe an hour ago and I let her kind of sit on them for an hour to make sure that she didn't have any eggs left in her body. Hopefully, hopefully she doesn't have any eggs. Wow, that is a pretty small clutch of eggs for this big girl, which is kind of interesting. And it kind of looks like, just by kind of feeling her body, doesn't really look like She's got any more eggs in there. She's a really good looking lemon blast. Really bright yellow up in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move her down here. Doesn't look like she has any more eggs in there. It's hard to tell because she is a really big girl. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna pull this tub up on the table and let's separate those eggs and candle them. All right, so this looks like my smallest clutch of the year. It's pretty small, only six eggs. And most of my clutches have been like between nine and 13 eggs. And it looks like I'm pretty much up to about 100 ball python eggs this year. Quite a few eggs. And it looks like this one's already separated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate these real quick. It looks like it won't take much to actually separate these guys. And it's kind of like, almost like a glue that holds them together, which is really interesting. When they're laid, they're really soft and gooey. And they, they, as they dry, they get like a leathery hard surface and they stick together, which is kind of interesting. You can tell these haven't really been laid very long ago, maybe, I'd say maybe a couple hours ago. And if they're, and I actually had some where <laughs> they, the, the snake laid the eggs right before the reptile show and I had to leave them for 12 hours and they got so stuck together there was absolutely no way that I could separate those eggs. If it's like 12 hours or more, there's no way because they just get super stuck together. So these, I think I can still separate these okay. And I only ever had, out of all my hundreds of ball python eggs, I've only ever had one leak and come apart on me. And I actually used a band-aid to actually stop it from continually leaking. 
And then after it stopped leaking, I removed the band-aid, which is kind of interesting. So this is the last one here. No problem. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to candle them. So if you haven't seen candling, essentially what I do is I use like a little flashlight. I have my little pocket flashlight. I'll turn on all the lights. And what I'll do is I'll use this marker. I just use a Sharpie. And I'll make a mark on the embryo. <clears throat> Now let's see, I'll turn this light off here and I'll show you how we candle some eggs. So essentially what it is, is the, the embryo is this big kind of, you can see it move and it's kind of round right on the top. You want the embryo to be on top when you're incubating the eggs. And I've heard if you keep it on the bottom, you usually have a lower hatch rate. It's a, it's a lower success for hatch rate. So you always want to keep the embryos up on top. And I've seen some people where they just kind of incubate the eggs as they come out from the snake. And a lot of times, you know, if you have the whole clump and you don't separate them, sometimes the embryos are, it seems like they're all over the place. They're not necessarily laid with the embryos on top. And you can see this one is right here. You can kind of see the circle right around the embryo and it kind of jiggles a little bit when you move it around. That is what you want on top of the egg. And you really can't see it unless you, you candle it. This one looks kind of interesting. <laughs> I can't quite tell what's going on with this one. But I'm guessing it's right there. So we got one more egg. And you really need a pretty strong flashlight for these. This one, you can see it doesn't really have like a circle. You can definitely tell the embryo is right there. All right, so I want to show you real quick how I set up the egg boxes. Essentially what I use is these cheap little shoe boxes. You can get them like at the dollar store real cheap. And I use vermiculite 50-50 with water by weight. And then I put one of these grates right on top with a lid and some press and seal. And I'll kind of show you how I do it. So I turn the balance on. And I used to put about 200 grams of each, the vermiculite and the water, and I found it was pretty much raising it up too high to where I couldn't seal it without the eggs getting too close to the top. So I brought it down a little bit, and essentially what I do is add 150 grams of water, 150 of vermiculite. So I just kind of pour some in here. It doesn't really have to be exact. You want to get your ratio probably exact or as close as possible. You know, some people just kind of wing it without actually weighing it, and it seems like it does okay. This is, we're at 149.4, uh, 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 yeah, about 149.5 grams of water. So then what I'll do is I'll zero the scale, and I use this vermiculite. I get it from Home Depot. It's really fine. And I use probably half this bag this year for about 100 ball python eggs. <laughs> so you can kind of get an idea of how far it goes. It goes a long way. Then it's about 50 grams per, uh, I think this is like a 16 ounce deli cup. So we should be, what, like 120. We want to be like at 150. 148, uh, 149.5, 149.5. So that is exactly what you should have, 50-50. And what I like to do is, before I do this, I either like to wear gloves, or in this case, I was just in the sink bleaching these tubs out, so my hands were all kind of full of bleach. You, you know, you really want to kind of avoid having too much you know bacteria and molds and whatnot in here because it's you know some of the eggs they'll go bad and it's, you really want to you don't really have to get it completely sterile but you want to try to avoid you know getting it really dirty in there you definitely you know want to keep it somewhat clean for the whole two months of incubation so then from here you just kind of want to make sure that you don't have any low spots so this is pretty level it sits right on top and you don't want the eggs rolling around so you want it pretty flat and from here what we do is we just put the eggs right in here now let me move those eggs over all right so i'm just going to pull these eggs and put them right in here 
And some people what they'll do is they'll use little clothes pins or toothpicks to kind of help them stay, you know, help them keep them from rolling. And what you really want to do is you want to keep them from the sides because the condensation will roll down the sides. You want to keep as much uh, moisture, you know, off of these eggs as possible. You want to definitely keep them in a humid environment. You just don't want them wet. That's the big thing. So essentially, <laughs> these are really kind of long, pointy eggs. So I kind of put them in there so if you move the box, they don't really roll around and that is pretty much as good as you can get right there and then what I do is I use this press and seal press and seal is it's kind of the magic for the whole thing it actually will keep the humidity in but it lets the snakes and the eggs breathe you know you can have a whole bunch of snakes in there I've had like you know six or seven snakes and with the press and seal on it no problem with the snakes being able to breathe what I do is I just put it on and then press it in place and I'd say probably every two or three weeks I go through and replace the press and seal check on the eggs and I'm actually gonna check on the eggs in the incubator because it looked like I was just kind of peeking in there it looked like we had one bad egg in there so I kind of want to go through change all the the press and seal check on those eggs and see how bad that bad one is and then from here what I do is you don't really necessarily need a cover I like to put a cover on it just so I can stack the boxes in the incubator and then I make a label and I'll make a quick label with my label maker all right so here are the labels that i put in the boxes i actually put two labels on the top two labels on the side just in case i mix up the lids it doesn't get mixed up so it's the lay date the hatch date and the pairing this was a lemon blast crossed with my pastel desert ghost this is a pastel pinstripe number one because i actually have four lemon blast females that i'm breeding in my collection right now all right so this is my six foot tall snake egg incubator that i converted from a beverage cooler and i just put this latest clutch of eggs right there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on the bottom i actually have a bad egg on the bottom i'm going to start pulling these and just look at them real quick make sure they're okay change the press and seal and hopefully all the eggs are fine all right so I'm gonna start with this box because I peeked in there and it looks like there may be one bad egg in there and the funny thing about this one is this is supposed to hatch in about a week and it's the same cross is essentially the same cross it was it's my pastel pinstripe number two crossed with my pastel desert ghost male so it should be the same exact results and I, the reason I did two is because I really want to hit that super blast the super pastel pinstripe and I'll probably never do this pair again with that snake and my lemon blasts so I really wanted to hit it and kind of move on to other projects and this one looks pretty bad <laughs> take a look at that one that is a funky looking egg take a look at that brown one there and the interesting thing about that egg right there is that it doesn't really smell bad and it's not really sunken in so I'm thinking a lot of this kind of this mold and this fungus and everything is kind of on the outside of the egg and I don't think that it'll really affect hopefully it won't affect the hatchling but it is looking pretty furry what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of move it a little bit away from the other eggs and since these are going to hatch in like a week <laughs> I don't think there's really much we can do with that egg besides just kind of leave it and I'm thinking there's going to be a good snake that's going to crawl out of that egg which is pretty amazing so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this press and seal and just pretty much just call it good and this you know if it was earlier and you know if it had like a whole month left what I'd probably do is separate it in another box and I try some different techniques to try to cut down on the mold and everything but but you know it's only a week away i think it'll be fine and i think a snake will actually come out of that all egg. right so that last box is actually going to hatch in i think it's eight days and this one's actually going to hatch in six days so this is the very next box that'll hatch i'll definitely put it on video and you'll see what's coming up this is actually my scaleless head cross with my lesser so we're looking for some lesser scaleless heads 
which would be pretty cool. And heading towards the totally scaleless blue-eyed leucistic is kind of what I'm thinking. And this one, wow, look at this. <laughs> I already have one, one snake that is making some cuts in the egg. This one, I, I could almost go through and do an egg cutting maybe in the next couple days, maybe even tomorrow I'll do an egg cutting and we'll see what's in these eggs. This is actually pretty interesting. Maybe what I'll do is I'll wait for the 4th of July to cut these, cut them on the 4th of July and see what we get. But this is, this is really promising. Uh, I could almost peek in and see what's in there, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna surprise you guys with an egg cutting on this box. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. That is actually coming out like uh, six days early. That's kind of unusual. So that looks really promising. You can see some of those eggs are pretty moldy on that one too. I kind of give you a close up on just kind of how funky these eggs look sometimes. There is, look at that one, it's quite a bit of mold on these eggs and they're still, they're still good and they're still coming out. So if you have moldy eggs, uh, usually I would say um, most of the times I've always kind of smelled the box. If, if an egg smells really bad, yeah, it's a pretty good bet that the snake actually died in the egg and there's really no hope and you can just throw it away. But if it's a little bit of mold and it smells good, all these boxes, they don't smell at all. It's pretty amazing. I would say all these snakes so far, it looks like they're going to hatch. All right, so I had quite a bit of time between from those when those last eggs were laid till when these eggs were laid. So what happened was is I had like two or three weeks where I didn't have any snakes laying any eggs. So these will actually hatch the 4th of August. So it's almost a complete month away. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have kind of a, a no eggs for a while and then we're going to have a whole bunch of eggs in August almost all at the same time hatching which will be pretty cool. These look really beautiful. Take a look at these. These, these almost look like they, they've been in there a month and it looks like we could have probably just put them in there yesterday. They are really looking good. It's pretty amazing. This is actually, so this is my het caramel albino female crossed with my spider pied male. And the interesting thing about my spider pied male is I'm pretty sure, 100%, 99% sure, that is a chimera. So but what I'm thinking is we may get some totally different genes popping up in some of these babies that aren't necessarily spider, aren't necessarily pied, depends on the chimerism and the weirdness of that snake. Could be a really weird outcome. So these are actually hatched the 5th of August, so this is another early August clutch. This is a bamboo crossed with my normal number one, the very first normal I had. I actually got her off of a Craigslist. It was one of my very first ball pythons. So let's take a look at these. I'm pretty sure this was a split clutch because there's only four eggs in here. Looks like I dripped a little bit on the eggs, trying to get all the moisture off the eggs. But these look, these look really good too. These are a little bit more dirty than the other ones. You can see, it's funny, you can see a little mold and bacteria kind of build up. It's usually not a problem at all. I've actually seen one breeder uh, out of all the, the ball python breeders that I've ever seen what, who they actually, what they did is they'd take the ball python eggs, they'd soak them in a dilute bleach solution before they'd set them up. And they claimed that they had really good success and I'm not quite that brave to risk my high dollar snake eggs dipping them in bleach. But I just thought that was interesting. All right, so here's the other half of that clutch. This is the bamboo cross with my normal female number one. Uh, pretty much the same outcome. So 50% of the babies will be bamboos, 50% will be normals, and nothing really fancy, half normals, half bamboos, so should be, uh, hopefully we'll get more bamboos than normals. <laughs> There's always a high demand just for the straight bamboos. I always like to produce uh, a lot of the straight bamboos just to kind of uh, you know, fulfill the demand for the straight bamboos. All right, so I'm really hoping nothing happens to this clutch of eggs. I'm actually planning on keeping every single snake in here, unless I get a bunch of males. This is actually my albino pied crossed with my clown, which is a pretty awesome cross. 
And these are looking good, <laughs> looking good so far. I was kind of, uh, kind of worried about uh, that something would be wrong with these guys. And you can kind of see there's a little bit, this one's kind of almost too close to the side. You definitely don't want them that close to the side because the condensation runs down. If the condensation gets on the eggs, then they can go bad pretty quick. You want to keep them humid, but you want to keep them fairly dry. So these guys are looking really good. I'm really looking forward to so that all these will actually hatch out looking like regular normal ball pythons. There actually might be some markers from the three hats together. So there would be head clown, head albino, and head pied. It'd be interesting to see what kind of markers there are with the triple head to see if they look any different from normal. So that is a really exciting club. Now what I plan to do is hopefully I'll get four females and two males. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm hoping for. You know, have one male just in case something happens to the other. And then uh, breed the males to the females. And then you can get clowns, pieds, albinos, albino pieds, albino clowns, albino pied clowns. You get a whole bunch of stuff, which will be kind of like an Easter egg batch of really high-end stuff coming out of these babies. So this is my other half of the clutch from the spider pied crossed with my 100% het caramel albino female. So this would be a really interesting clutch. And these are doing just as well as the other ones. It looks like, shh, looks like these were put in here yesterday. Look at how fresh those are. And the interesting thing is, is the, 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 that uh, spider pie being a chimera, I'm pretty sure it's a chimera because the eyes are different colors on each side of the head. And if it, if it turns out that it breeds like a regular spider pie, essentially you'll have a hundred, all of them will be a hundred percent het pied, and half of them will be spiders, half will look like normals. And there's actually been quite a few people asking me. For spiders, believe it or not, <laughs> it seems like not many people are working with with spider ball pythons, and there's not a whole lot of spiders. I think mainly because of the the bad rap they get for like the head wobble and the neurological issues. So it'll be interesting to actually have a few spiders available for people who are interested in buying those. All right, so this year I produced just a few crosses with my coral glows. I just produced uh, essentially just two clutches with my coral. This is a coral glow crossed with my normal normal female. So half the babies will be coral glow, half will be normal. Actually, actually my coral glow is 100% head pied, so half these babies will be head pied, and you really don't know which ones they are, so they'll be 50% head pied, which would be kind of interesting. But these are looking pretty good for being in there for a while, and not a really big clutch. This is a pretty small clutch, only five eggs. So, but I was thinking next year, maybe kind of ramping up the production of the coral glows because it seems like a lot of people want coral glows. And the funny thing is when I started producing them, it seemed like a lot of people weren't really interested. And then as soon as the interest really peaked for the coral glows, I couldn't even produce enough to, you know, match the demand for them. So next year, I'll definitely be pairing that coral glow with quite a few females. All right, so actually this is the other half of that coral glow clutch. I was thinking, man, I don't think I had any clutches that small. So that was five eggs and you cross with this and look at, look at how much condensation is on the top. And that's one of the reasons I really like to go through and change the press and seal just so it doesn't drip on the eggs. You can kind of keep it from dripping on the eggs, but you can see when I pull it off a little bit, kind of still drips on the eggs. <laughs> but you really don't want it raining down on the eggs. That's really why you want to go through, change your press and seal, I'd say at least every two to three weeks. So this is five, the other one was five, it was a 10 egg clutch. Hopefully out of these we'll get probably on average like five coral glows 
which would be pretty awesome. And some of these snakes, I've never actually paired it with something that's 100% head pied. So if this normal actually turns out to be head pied, you never really know. You could actually get some pieds coming out, which is kind of a long shot, but it's possible. All right, so this clutch is the one that I actually let sit for 12 hours before I looked at it. And the problem was is the eggs are so stuck together, I couldn't get them apart. So I put them in one big batch, one big clump in this box here. You can see they're all kind of just stuck together the way they were laid. You can see even pulling off the, just pulling off the press and seal, I kind of rained down a little bit on the eggs and you just kind of have to kind of chase it and kind of just, you know, spot dry these eggs a little bit. And these are looking really good too. No problems at all. They look really fresh. Of course, they really haven't been in here that long. <laughs> it's from uh, 16th of June. So maybe just a couple weeks they've been in here, but they still look really good. Essentially, just put them in there just the way they were laid. The hard thing about this is the press and seal doesn't really fit over the top very well. So what I've been doing is kind of doing kind of a sideways press and seal on here just because it doesn't really fit on the top very good. I almost wish I could get like a wider press and seal. But as long as you keep the, the humidity in there, I don't think it really matters. And it seems to be working fine just like this. So this cross was actually my albino pied crossed with a pinstripe. So the crown jewel of this would be a pinstripe het albino het pied. All right, so that is official. It's the end of the ball python egg laying season for my snakes here in my reptile room for 2019. And from here on out, essentially, we're just pulling eggs out of the incubator and watching the hatchlings come out of the egg. It's pretty exciting. As a matter of fact, last year I lost, I'd say between five and 10 eggs from the mold and fungus. It looks like we have one kind of on the edge. I think it'll be okay, but it looks like so far we might have 100% hatch rate, which is pretty awesome. So thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along and I will see you next time.